Hi, and welcome to Wednesday's Word. I'm Alexis Carucci, and I want to thank you for joining me today. This is our last Wednesday of the month, uh, of the year, excuse me, on 2020. It's December 30th of 2020. So thank you for joining me, uh, closing out this year and this month with a word from the Lord of let go and let God build your life and future. I want to thank you uh, for letting me know who you are when you come on and where you're viewing from. And also, I would encourage you to share this broadcast so that others can hear the word of the Lord as well. Well, this will be not only our last uh, broadcast for this year, but I'm also going to be taking a break in January from video broadcasts and writing uh, blogs, except for I will post a written blog on January 1st. So look forward uh, to sharing that with you. But today we're going to look at let go and let God build your life. So once again, thanks for joining me. So how are you preparing to step into the season of new? Jennifer Milan of Reliant Family Church in Tampa, Florida says that part of letting go is laying down those things that no longer serve us in this season so we can grab onto things that are bigger and better that God has for us, the new things that he has for us. Remember um, earlier this month on December 9th, uh, we talked about God is declaring new things. And if you haven't gotten a chance to uh, hear that broadcast or read that blog, make sure you go back and do that as you're preparing for entering into 2021. Well, letting go doesn't mean that we don't say or do nothing. Resting in Christ isn't inactivity, but spiritual activity. It means resting in the finished work of Christ, his peace, and knowing that he is good and he will help us. We're to fight the good fight of faith, stand our ground against the enemy, and etc. Um, so we are to do the things with the power of the Lord rather than in our own strength. Jesus said that apart from him, we can do nothing. John 15, 5. I want to thank Wilson Valenti for watching. Welcome. We're looking at let go and let God build your life. Well, we can revisit the past to look at the choices we've made and how they affect our identity in Christ. Our soul's enemy, Satan, tries to change our beliefs to affect who we are meant to be by using our thoughts and emotions. Well, we need to cast out any thoughts that don't line up with the word of God and what God says about us. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 and 5 and Romans 12 2. It's important that we meditate on the word as well as to guard our heart. Philippians 4 8 and Proverbs 4 20 through 23. Well, God wants to heal all of our deepest hurts, even the ones we don't know about. We don't even know that we have sometimes these deep hurts. But we must get ready for our next season by releasing the past from our souls. We can't live with past regrets, unforgiveness, resentments, and bitterness. We must deal with these things so they don't affect our present or our future. You can't heal a wound by saying it's not there. Your soul wounds don't only affect you, and they do affect other people. So let Jesus heal your soul wounds. Let your soul's inner healing take place by the Spirit of God flooding your innermost being. We can also ask for help and support from other people besides God, we see in Nehemiah 2.17 where others came alongside of Nehemiah to help build the wall. Our walls can represent things that we need um, to repair or restore in our lives. We don't focus on the problem but on God 
who is and has the answer. God knows all things, and he knows the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, 9 through 11 tells us that. Well, hope is an anchor for our soul, expecting good things from God. Hope is to the soul what water is to the body and overcomes pain and paralyzing fear. We need to live in the secret place that Psalm 91 verse 1 talks about. That place of refuge, that place of protection, that place of being in God, in Christ. Well, we keep ourselves strong for the journey because he is strong and he is our strength. So ask God to heal your soul and move back into faith to believe for your future. Jeremiah 29, 11 in the New King James Version says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. We can make choices to shift and align with God's plans for our lives. Part of letting go is surrendering to him and trusting him with all of our hearts, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We need to draw close to him first and let go of our plans to do God's plans, James 4, verses 7 and 8. Letting go of our expectations and letting God have his perfect way. In Mark 8, 35, Jesus talked about letting go. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Rob Malone of Reliant Family Church in Tampa, Florida, says that God helps us transition out of our way of doing things into his best practices. So how do we let go of something that we like doing? Or how do we stop wanting to do something that we like to do or that we've been hanging on to for a long time in our lives? Well, we need God's help. We can't do it on our own. He is the one that gives us the desire and the power and the ability to make the transition and shift. Philippians 2.13 and Ephesians 3.20. I hope that you have an opportunity to write these verses down and to go back and look them up for yourself. Or if you're not able to uh, write them down at this time, I pray that you'll go back over and listen to this broadcast again so that you can get these scriptures, these references down in your heart to receive and believe them for your life as well. Well, God provides us with the heart to know him and return to him with our whole hearts. We're told that in Jeremiah 24, 7. So we need to let go of the expectations we have for ourselves and what expectations other people have for us as well. We can't live by those expectations. Rather than having our expectations, whether they're good or bad, we need to live in the expectancy of what God will do next in our lives. In Redding, uh, California, Pastor Ben Armstrong of Bethel Church states, Expectancy creates an environment for the very thing you expect to happen to happen. God creates an appetite in us for something he will use in our lives. He is a good God and he has good things for us. We are fully known, loved, and accepted. As we follow his plan and fulfill his purposes in our lives, we're blessed in the process. So letting go of good ideas so we can embrace God ideas is going to be important for us. To have a God idea involves surrendering our will, our preferences and expectations, etc. And then that is when we're going to walk in signs, miracles, and wonders. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Romans 8, 28, and I'm reading these from the New King James Version, says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. 
Well, that's been my verse that the Lord has given me in different seasons of my life. And I pray that that'll be something that, that will minister to you as well. I was recently sharing with a friend on the phone uh, something about what I'm sharing with you about good ideas versus God ideas. And I said that there are so many opportunities to learn about the Lord through uh, teachings on Facebook or YouTube or seminars, webinars, conferences, and so much more that they can fill my days and weeks. They're all good, but too many to manage. And I was starting to feel overwhelmed and stressed. I think I was expecting too much of myself trying to accelerate my own process of growing in, in the Lord. Instead of asking the Holy Spirit what was important for me at this time. Remember, we talked about times and seasons. There are things that the Lord brings to us, particularly for times and seasons. And he's always preparing us for what's coming ahead. So we need to know what the Holy Spirit has for us each day. When we let him lead, guide, and confirm the things that he has for us, we have the time to do other things he's planned for us as well. And all we have to do is ask, listen, and then follow him by obeying. We can rest in the grace that he gives us to complete our day. Remember, grace is not only his favor, but it's his ability, uh, his enablement for us to carry those things out. When I allow him to do this, um, I love to see how he plans and provides for my days and weeks because his plans are perfect. And I'm doing God's will, not mine. When we surrender our will and plans to him, everything we do becomes worship. I'm going to read Romans 12, 1 and 2 from the Amplified Version because it talks about laying down our lives as a sacrifice, which is our worship. So listen to this and get this in your spirit. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. That was Romans 12, 1 and 2 in the Amplified Version. Well, if we look at this past year from a man's perspective, or in the natural, we might think 2020 was a terrible season or year. And we do see that the enemy has tried to attack the body of Christ and our cities and families and nations. But we remember in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things out together for our good as we look to him and we're called according to his purpose. So if we look at things from God's perspective, he has us right where he wants us to be. He's working in us and through us to complete his good plan and to advance his kingdom. Romans 8, 28, as I mentioned, and Philippians 2, 13. So we're to deal with our past to bring healing for our present and future and to seek him for the new things that he wants to do in our lives for this next season and in 2021. Well, the Lord has instructed me to take the month of January off from writing my weekly blog and my Wednesday's Word video broadcast. Um, he wants me to complete the book that I started on Christ the Healer. Um, it's the second volume in the Living the Abundant Life series. If you didn't get a chance to read the first volume, Are You Living the Abundant Life? Keys to Living the Abundant Life that Jesus came to give us, you can purchase the Kindle version 
at my amazon.com author page under Alexis Carucci. And I've uh, put the link in my written blog as well as um, you can find the links to it on my Instagram uh, page where if you go into my uh, bio and check the link there, you can find not only the blog and this video on YouTube that will be posted, but also a link to my author page um, for that book as well. So as we close out the year 2020, I pray that, that you will have a more profound revelation of who you are becoming in Christ Jesus, that you are becoming more and more like Jesus every day as you live and walk in the Spirit-led life. Galatians 5, 16 and verse 25. So continue to draw on his strength and draw close to him. So starting in February 2021, our focus will be to encounter God today. Well, once again, thank you for joining me. I'd like to close out our session today with uh, some prayer and just to see what the Lord wants to do and say um, as we close out this time. So, Father, I thank you for all of those that have joined me this year in hearing your word for us. I pray, Lord, that they not only would be blessed, but Holy Spirit, that you would bring to their remembrance whatever they have learned and Jesus has said, and that you would show them how to apply these truths to their lives, that they would be fruitful, that they would have and walk in that abundant life that you came to give them, Lord Jesus. I come against any spirit of discouragement and hopelessness or fear, sickness or disease in the name of Jesus. That is not the abundant life, Lord Jesus, that you came to give them. And so I pray that your abundant blessings would be poured out upon each and every one listening to the live broadcast and those on the replay. I pray that you bless them, families, that they would be bold and courageous uh, in this coming year, that they would walk into those new things that you're showing them for their lives, that they would not be afraid, but embrace their destiny in Christ Jesus. I pray all of this, a prayer of protection, Psalm 91, over each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to thank you all those that have joined me this past year. If you've missed any of the broadcasts, I would recommend that you go back and listen to them or read the written blog, either here on my Facebook page, Living the Abundant Life, or on my website at alexiscarucci.com, or my Instagram page, or my Twitter feed. So thank you very much for joining me. I speak blessings over you. Thank you, for uh, Sue, uh, for joining me. Um, I just speak blessings over each and every one that is watching and listening. So until next year, when I come back again in February, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace, his shalom. Blessings. <music>